Morning, folks. I received a request to talk about and show how I've been painting my Blood Bowl figures using the GW contrast paints. So I thought I'd this morning grab a cup of coffee before work and provide just a few strokes on what I've been doing and how it's been working for me. You can see this dwarf blitzer, it's all contrast paint on here. I'm not a good painter at all, it's not what I do. I actually paid a friend of mine, a Ryan Guy, to paint this. Troll Slayer is my inspiration to get my team done. That's a true paint job. Whereas I did my own Troll Slayer using all contrast paints, which is definitely serviceable. It'll, it'll work. Uh, th this dog will hunt, but uh, it's definitely not that quality that a true painter can get. But some of you were interested in what that looks like, so I, th I thought I'd show you some painting. On this model here, I've already completed the uh, the actual blue on this model. So I've gone around and then touched up back with the white. So I start with a, a primer of just a white, Vallejo white. I use an airbrush to prime with. Uh, I really like priming with an airbrush. Everything gets smoother. If you try to rattle can prime, and then use contrast paints. If you're not using the GW specific paint, it really isn't going to work because the paint's not going to, the, the contrast paint's not going to smoothly flow on the model itself. You have to have a very smooth primer on here. So either brush on the, uh, the GW paint or you can do like a Vallejo with an airbrush to prime it and that'll give you a nice smooth surface to work on. I think what I'll start with here is we'll, we'll start on the top and work our way down. Um, I like doing the, the larger spaces of the model first. Kind of feel like I'm actually getting somewhere with it. I think for this runner, uh, I might go with a, a blonde kind of a look to him. So we'll go with this Na Nasdreg yellow contrast paint. Don't forget to really shake up your paint. What I found with contrast paint is uh, I started being very careful in how I applied it, almost painting with it. Um, what I've learned is that doesn't work. What you need to do with contrast paint is be sloppy and just like mop it on there. Get a good amount onto the bristles and just literally slop it on there. You know, it'll, it'll pool. It'll look like you've got too much on there. And it'll get messy, but when it dries, it's going to create that contrast that you're looking for. You'll get those dark shadows in the, uh, in the pockets and underneath, and then you'll get those lighter versions of that color in the, at the raised edges. If you just lightly put a coat on, that's not going to work. It won't happen. You have to have a, a good brushed on amount. You can see here, I'm trying to stay away from everything else that I've already painted, which is really hard with this contrast stuff because you're, you are slopping it on so much. I mean, it's, it's almost like mopping the deck. It's more mopping than it is painting. So it means you get a lot of crossover, which for me, I just, Get a little bit of white on a brush, and then touch up, and call it a day. I changed my philosophy on my painting, because I noticed I really wasn't getting anything done. Just kept coming back to the same models, trying to fix, and touch up, and fix, and touch up, and never really finished. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go with more of a uh, permission to be sloppy. You know, just get them done. At the end of the day, I'm going to learn a lot as I finish this team, and then the next team should be better. I feel like I've, I've slopped on enough on his face. Make sure I get all his hairs. And then the back of the hair. Yeah, I feel like I got them all. We'll do the same with his buddy over here. 
I've been doing two models at a time. Find that uh, allows me to focus on these two models that are same pose, same same style, same pose. And if I catch a piece or something that um, I forget to do on one model, I'm usually reminded by the other model that oh wait that's a that's a flip of hair there. Make sure to go back and check the other model and make sure that I painted that as well. And I'm I'm really enjoying these Citadel holders. Like clamp the model on, give me a handle to hold on to, which is real nice. I think that's good for him. All right. Just like that. I've painted the face, the hair for these two models. I'll go in and turn off the brush. on to a different color I think about showing you the gray that comes out of this beautiful gray there it is basilicanum gray basilicanum gray and it almost gives you a metallic look when you use basilicanum gray You can hear the rattling in that can. Um, what I did is I took a steel shot and put some steel shot in each bottle, which really helps me to agitate the paint and the contrast. I've been using the Basilicum Gray for the, the shoes because of the cleats on the bottom. But in order to speed paint, just been putting it all over the shoe. Pretty much make the whole shoe gray. I touched up the cleats on the on the on the shoes with uh, some metallic silver to really make the cleats pop. I knew that uh, these guys are playing a sports game. They got their cleats as well. I'm sorry if you could see there, getting a little sloppy with it, but that's okay. For some reason this this. Uh, Paint, contrast paint, so forgiving. If you get some overspill, you just come back and cover it up with a little bit of white once it dries, and then paint it whatever color you intended to. So I want to end up doing all the helmet pieces the gold. What I do is I Start off with gray on top of the helmet. It'll be gold. I hit with some gray. Come back and quick dry brush the gold. So it gives it some contrast, some some pop. Some of that gray, so when I come back and do the pants in the snake bite leather, that part of the pant is a little bit darker than the rest. Really doesn't have a lot of armor. I like the blitzers. I did the the arm the uh the hand weapon in the in the black and gray and then use actually a, a silver sharpie marker to get the silver on it really trying to find shortcuts to getting this team done my goal is is to complete a team complete my first team and just be happy with, with that fact that I've actually finished the team
hopes that when we start our next league at Armada, that we'll be ready to go with my dwarf team ready to play. You can see I've already done the snake bite leather on his pants. Gotta do this player's pants. Work on the helm. It is almost a dabbing uh slop it on there. There's and that's what I wanted to show. There's really not much to this. I know you guys gave me some compliments when I posted up my last models. Uh the the first two that I did and I appreciate that. But what I want to show here is I'm really not doing much. I'm just slopping it on. Good for the gray. Go ahead and do the snake bite leather on the other blitzer that way they match hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how simple this paint goes on <clears throat> so here i'm gonna use the snake bite leather on this model make him match his friend I use the snake bite leather on the pants and then around the the armor and the straps that go across to the front as well. And on the pants, I'm really just slopping it on. You know, I'm not differentiating the socks, making that snake pipe leather make it look like just one long pant. I've been playing a lot of Blood Bowl on Steam lately. We created a group in our for our local game group, and we started off with just three of us playing in this little Blood Bowl league on uh, on Steam. And I'm just learning how to play that online stuff. I've, I've learned a lot now that we've been trapped with this COVID, uh, but we're really enjoying it. Created a dwarf team on there. I'm struggling to get points, star player points. That is, uh, I, I guess I'm just not that strategic to be able to make the decisions necessary to, to make sure that certain players are getting certain points. But I'm learning from my friends who jumped on there and watching how they do things like uh, put a player in the end zone who they want to score points and then have another player run up and just hand him the ball so that that player scores the touchdown and he can then upgrade him. Uh, and my buddy Nick did that with his war dancer uh, in, the game, in the match against me, which really took me by surprise. I didn't expect that. Uh, I learned a little bit about strategy and how to uh, how to advance your players. I notice I got some on the armored shoulder pads. I'm just going to come in here with a paper towel and try to dry it off or take it off before it dries. And that's pretty much it. I'll be happy. I'll be fine with that spot looking that way. Like I said, I'm giving myself permission to be a little slop in trade. Uh, we'll get things done. Plan. I look a little sloppy on things I, I messed up, but at the end of the day, they will be finished. And I think that matters. I'm not going to let perfection get in the way of progress, is what I've been telling myself. You can see how I mopping it on there, how uh, that's created those recesses. Uh, the dark in the recesses and the light and the tops of the pants and all I really did was just slop it on. I mean that that's makes these paints worth everything that, that I've paid for them. 
that just makes it easy. All right, we'll do one more color and call it a day uh, for now. That'll be snake bite. Le uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to go with the skeleton horde. Skeleton horde is very light beige. Kind of a bone color. We'll go with the bone. We'll use that for the tunic. Bone for the tunic. Call that a day. Hopefully I, I answered your question on how I do this. You can see how easy it is. Much easier it is than, than I even thought. Get some mixing colors. You don't allow them to fully dry in between because they're very wet. Like I said, progress I'm going for. Done. As I keep using this paint, I'll get better at it understand better how to get things done. Looking at that there, I can see that that looks like part of a helmet or is that hair? That might be hair. I think I need to go back with the hair on that and cover up that white spot. And it's not that I don't care about how my models end up looking. Just I, I fell in this trap where I see what how others are painting and the quality and the level that they're doing. And every time I painted, I just knew I wasn't getting to that level. So I, I would I would start and then I would just stop, give up. Say, okay, I'll just I'll I'll go learn more and then try again later. I'll learn more and try again later. And what I found is I never tried again later. Never came back to try to finish what I started. They just sat there with their primer on them in a sad state of affairs. This time I'm just telling myself, you know what, Carlos, just get it done. Get in there and get it done. <clears throat> You know, I'll make these guys twins in the story. And fix that. Boom. That was easy. Well, the only thing left is the football, so why stop now? Uh, let's carry on. Get a, a brown for the football. And this model will almost be complete except for the basing. Like that. Two more down. Be at halfway done. And by this weekend, I'll have the whole team done. I'm going to go with a, a darker brown for the ball. <clears throat> and maybe on the next guy, I'll swap the pants pants out for a darker brown. This is uh, Signar 
Sigor Brown. Sigor Brown is the color I'm going to be using now. Kind of see how dark that is. in here trying not to get his fingers and that's been the toughest part with these is getting the paints to not overlap come back here and do the back of the ball I think they do overlap because my painting isn't that strong. And look, he's done. Just got to hit him up with some highlights of silver on the helm. <clears throat> but I got to wait for it to dry to do that. And Okay, listen, I've been really cheating on that part. This is what I've been using for my metallics. Got a Sharpie permanent marker in silver. Also in bronze and in gold. And I just go in there, paint on uh, the colors I want. Um, yeah, I know that's not professional level, but hey, folks, if I'm looking to play the game, not paint, this is not my part of the hobby I enjoy at all. I don't know about you, but I, I love assembling models, which reminds me of when I was a kid building model airplanes and helicopters. But what I just can't stand is the painting of models. Take such a patience, steady hand. I feel I just don't have in the eyes for it. I don't have it. And so I just get frustrated when it doesn't look like what I see on the box. But I'm really enamored with this paint, this contrast paint. And you can see the results just, just I mean, just in the last what, we've been together twenty minutes on this? Fifteen minutes. And you can see the results. Models. Just that little bit of work. Put these little in so you can rat. So here's my here's my runner. Get this camera to zoom to focus. And you can see the hair. I'm gonna come back and touch up those bits inside the hair, change them to a different color once it dries. You see the snake bite leather for the pants and around the armor, holding the armor plating on. Did the the bone, the uh, skeleton hoard for the tunic. Kind of see that that light, that light beige. Uh, did the metallic on the helm. I'm gonna come back and touch that up with silver or gold. Um, and then the Sigor Brown on the football itself. Once it dries, you'll you'll begin to see the contrast. I'll give you guys an update with pictures on this one. Um, and then there's that uh, basilicum gray on the cleats. You can see how it. Like I said, it, it as it starts to dry, it almost becomes a metallic look to it because of the shading that it offers. And all I did was mop it on. So really hope you guys, uh, hope this answered your question. Uh, I know, James, you had put out there a little challenge to me to put this on, on stream, on paint. You can guys can see how I do it. There it is. Comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, stay safe out there and uh, stay home. Thanks, guys.